who doesn't want abs? Technically, you already have them. So I guess Jeff's advice is a moot point. No, the, the reality is that while, yes, we all have abdominal muscles, we're overburdened with fat tissue around our abdominal muscles, thereby making it impossible to see well-defined abs, unless you're Superman with see-through vision. Considering this is a popular topic for many people, let's go over Jeff Nippard's three tips for achieving those visible abs. If you're unfamiliar with Jeff, he's a natural pro bodybuilder and also competed in powerlifting. He snuggles up to a science-based perspective across all his videos, explaining anatomy, physiology, and backs it all up with sports science studies. So did he get this one right? Well, let's find out how to get some abs showing. Let's talk about training. Now, it's popular these days to say that ab training is a waste of time because the argument goes, you can train them as much as you want. If you're not lean enough, you won't see the definition anyway. But I disagree. Imagine applying this logic to any other muscle. It'd be like saying, don't train your shoulders because unless you're lean enough, you're not gonna see the definition anyway. But no one ever says that. The point is, you do need to train your abs so that when you cut down, there's actually enough muscle there for them to pop through. And if you build up your abdominal muscles through proper hypertrophy training, they will pop more just like any other muscle. Yeah, I have to admit, I've never understood that argument either. I think that people get really fixated on the idea of showing their abs. I mean, that's why we're here even. But we're far less concerned with showing our back muscles. And yet, they follow the same principles. They both have to undergo muscle hypertrophy growth to accentuate them, but I'm getting ahead. The problem with most ab training online is that most fitness influencers showcase these fast paced, quote unquote, fat burning circuit style workouts, which truly are a waste of time for the most part. That's because these workouts don't actually get the abdominal muscles close enough to failure to stimulate meaningful hypertrophy. They are essentially just another form of cardio. Sure, you'll burn a few extra calories, but you're not building your six pack. Truer words have never been spoken. A lot of fast paced nonsense out there, which is also echoed by sports scientists like Dr. Mike Isertail. Your abs grow exactly the same as any other muscle. Instead, to get your six pack to really pop, you'd be much better off doing progressive overload training, just like you would for any other muscle. That means loading the ab muscles with weight. And to build your best six pack, you really only need two exercises, one weight loaded crunch and one leg raise. Those are your main two. So this is your full six pack training plan. You hit your abs twice per week and you can shuffle the days around to whatever fits your schedule best. Again, agreed. I may not be a bodybuilder, but when I train my abs, I focus on these two exercises and progressively overload, just like any other exercise. These are the results that I've managed following that exact routine. I'll show you what I consider more impactful results after discussing the third tip. It would also be smart to include some cardio in your plan, even if it isn't required for fat loss. Research shows that combining weight training and cardio leads to smaller waists than just weight training alone. Okay, finally, some research. My moment to shine. So is the addition of cardio a benefit to getting them abs? Well, if we crack open the study that he cites and we look at the data therein, we're looking at the data comparisons across 32 randomized control trials for fat mass. So how to read this? See that middle line, the one at zero? That indicates no advantage one way or another. Then AET is cardio alone. RT is resistance training, lifting weights alone. CT is the combined training. So what Jeff is talking about, resistance training plus cardio. CONT is the control or no training. You can see the comparisons. So for example, AET versus control for the first one, if the dot and the line move to the left of the middle line that we discussed before, that means that cardio or aerobic exercise led to fat loss compared to people who do nothing. Probably not rocket science, right? In general, we see all forms of exercise alone or in combination lead to a fat loss effect. Then have your eyes wander down and now we can compare the different exercise types against one another. In general, it seems there might be a slight advantage of doing the combination training compared to the resistance training. 
it's a little tough to tease out because there were only a few studies included for that comparison. Additionally, not all the studies used a nutrition intervention, which significantly muddies the results here too. But that all said, Jeff seems to be right. Adding in cardio can help. Being more active with cardio will also allow you to eat more calories and more active people tend to be more successful in keeping the weight off over the long term. So feel free to include two to five 30 minute low to moderate intensity cardio sessions per week. But the reality is you can do the most optimal progressive ab training on the planet and until you get lean enough, your abs simply won't be visible. So before he gets to the last point, I'll go ahead and link the last study that he mentions. Uh, but also it's true that moving more will certainly allow a person to eat more and still achieve their target of attaining those abs. However, it's really a slippery slope because it tends to work well for people who know that cardio only mildly burns calories relative to your entire day's metabolism. Because if you base your caloric burn on an activity device or the treadmill number, you will get some wildly inaccurate data. So please ignore those metrics entirely. They're highly likely wrong. The standard is that you burn about 100 calories per mile of activity. And even that shifts depending on the person. Just a warning because people hear, I can eat more if I do cardio. And then they way over consume thinking that they made up for it through exercise. And that's where your nutrition comes in. So next, let's set up your six pack diet. It's very simple. Take your current body weight in pounds and multiply it by 10 to 12. That's how many calories you'll eat. Then take your goal body weight, also in pounds, and multiply it by 0.8 to one. And that's how much protein you'll eat. Make sure you eat at least 50 grams of fat per day and whatever's left over are free calories. They can be carbs, fat, or protein. Okay, nutrition. Jeff points out some general rules to follow, and the body weight times 10 to 12 is pretty restrictive, but it is a solid target to aim for. I agree with these protein numbers, but I would likely aim for closer to that one gram number because protein is muscle sparing during the fat loss and protein is satiating during the fat loss phase as well. His mention of dietary fat is also critical and it's true, any remaining room that you have in your daily calories can go to whatever fits your lifestyle best. Now, before we go on to the next thing that Jeff says that might have a few people explode in English incredulity. I'll also point out that I realize that calorie counting isn't for everyone. And I wouldn't say that calorie counting is necessary to achieve your visible ab muscle dreams. But as you get closer to your goal, the journey becomes more and more difficult and having exactness like a scientist becomes incrementally more important to achieve success. If you don't have exact data, you'll be spinning your wheels. However, if you want to collect that data, calories or otherwise is up to you. Okay, on to Jeff's craziest take. Are you ready? The types of foods you eat are far less important than simply hitting your daily targets. Remember the natural bodybuilder I showed earlier? He got that lean while eating Pop-Tarts regularly. But still, try to prioritize minimally processed, nutritious whole foods over highly processed, less nutritious junk food most of the time. And here's a summary of the full six pack diet if you wanna pause and screenshot. The bodybuilder he references is Alberto Nunez. I used to follow his work at least a decade ago now. And it's true that he used to eat uh, different low nutritious snacks and still get extremely lean. Pop-Tarts was a go-to. So there's a lot to say here, but as Jeff pointed out, it's likely best to focus your attention on whole foods. That said, if you want to indulge, it doesn't actually throw you off your goal and you've hit your daily nutrients for the day, including micronutrients, then there's no scientific reason you can't indulge. As a matter of fact, one of my leanest moments, I was indulging in such heathen behavior on a regular basis and still losing body fat. Of course, many will then claim a person can't be healthy doing that, and I would disagree. If it's a minority of your nutrition, you've buttoned up everything else, nutritionally speaking, and you can psychologically and physically manage it, there's zero scientific data that contraindicates. You can lose body fat and achieve fantastic health while indulging, per the rules outlined. So I agree with Jeff here too. So look, in total, the priority pans out like this. One, nutrition. Two, resistance training for abs. 
and three, cardio. You can forego the cardio completely and still achieve most, if not all, of your goals if you follow the other two and the majority of the time. So Jeff nails it here and really does a great job breaking down the basics. He mentions more in his video, which I'll link below, but also he mentions something that I didn't cover here, but I cover in far more detail in this video right here. It will help immensely at achieving those abs. I'll speak with you over there. Thank <laughs> you.